Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about custom phone ROMs. Are they viable? Before we dive into custom phone ROMs, let's go ahead and talk about should you use one or not. And there's a lot of things going back and forth in this. First and foremost, if you're not going to use custom phone ROMs for the best overall privacy of your person on your device, I would recommend using an Apple device if you are not going to be customizing it. If you are going to be customizing it, Android is better, but it takes a little bit more to harden Android down, which is where the idea of custom phone ROMs come into play. Now, of course, we have a couple of contenders for the Linux phones coming up as well. The problem is the Linux phones are not yet ready for regular consumptible use. They're not particularly good at this point in time. And with that being said, we just, you know, right now, as the time I'm doing this, the Linux phones are just not there yet for mobile use. Hopefully they will get there and we can all be using Linux phones instead of having the two major contenders. So with that, what are custom ROMs? Well, custom ROMs are uh, various builds of the open source aspects of Android. So of course, Google bought Android, which is what is used on, on the majority of phones. Anything that's not an Apple phone is probably an Android phone of some form or another. And this splits apart into your stock Google operating systems, Samsung, you have your Huawei bills, you know, all these different major phone manufacturers. They take what is called the Android Open Source Project, so AOSP. They take this and they do some form of build custom modifications or things to it, and then they create their own different operating system. When you go to the store and you purchase like your latest Samsung Galaxy phone or something like that, they've taken that Android open source project and made it their own. They put in their own tools, their own apps, their own devices, and then they flash that onto the phone and you're pretty much locked into that. However, some phones do have the capabilities where you can unlock it, you can flash your own custom ROMs onto the phone, and that is specifically what we're going to talk about today. There are a number of different phone ROMs that you can use. I just pulled out four of them to chat about today. Three of these are ones I actually actively have on phones right now, and the fourth one is what is probably considered the best. I just don't have a compatible phone to it, and it's not super high priority for me to go ahead and get that. So with these custom phone ROMs, they take the, and they'll do some degree, they'll take the Android open source project, some of them, like what I consider the best is Graphene, this one actually de deconnects everything from Google. Basically meaning that the only tracking done on that phone is whatever the carrier can ascertain from your location data from the cell towers. And there's no way to have a phone and prevent that from happening. You can do things like keeping the phone in airplane mode and only checking in every now and again to, for checking your messages. That is a good way to stay private. Uh, while while utilizing these services, but of course, if you're if you're using an Android phone, uh, stock Android phone, you can turn on air. You know, I don't know about airplane mode necessarily. You can turn off your cellular data, your wireless connections, and things. But as long as you still have things like Bluetooth and and Wi-Fi, those connections will still feed data back to Google. So, what the custom ROMs are going to do is they're going to do some tweaks under the hood. Some of them do a little bit more tweaks, some of them do a little bit less tweaks. Now, with all of these out of the box, generally you lose access to some of those Google Play services, which for me is exactly what I want to happen. But for some of you guys, depending on how you use your phone, this might be a deal breaker. You can reinstall Google Play services on your device. Really the only advantage of doing this and having a custom ROM and doing that is if you want some other form of theming or you just want something else in the phone but you don't really care about all the googliness, no big deal, whatever. And that's okay, That that's, that's your choice, your device, your choice, that's fine. And so you take your custom ROM, you add your Google services back onto it and your phone is basically almost usable perfectly. There is a little caveat. Many of the new banking apps are coming out and they're detecting if your phone bootloader has been has been toggled, they will not allow you to use their apps. This is absolute ridiculous. And if you have a bank that's insisting you do this, I would 
dump that bank and go with another bank instead. That being said, I don't recommend doing any of your banking on your phone. It's just not secure and private enough. There's too many weird connections going on. There's too many things that apps can do that you don't even realize. It's the best practice to not use banking apps and a lot of other of these privacy-focused apps on your devices. But that being said, if you don't want to do Google Play services, but you do want to be able to run some Google type ads, um, not ads, uh, applications, there is another term that is called micro G. This is an open source version of the Google services, which will allow your phone to do a lot of things as if Google services were installed on the device. And frankly, they do work pretty well on most cases. The last way to go is to say, I don't want anything that seems like Google services at all, period. This is my personal philosophy. I just don't want any of those connections. If it won't run, I don't really care because frankly, my phone is just used for basic communication and a few interfacing things with my Nextcloud instance, all of which are pure open source capabilities. So these are the, the directions. So is it viable to use a custom phone ROM in this manner? I want to tell you the answer is absolutely yes, with the caveat that again, you're willing to be slightly inconvenienced. You're willing to recognize some of the, the issues with having a phone and connecting with a lot of different services. For me, I have been using Lineage now for, I think, three years. I can't remember for sure, but I have not used any stock operating system at all for over three years, I think. And when I first put this on, it was like a breath of fresh air because my device became my device again. Now, is this difficult to do? Honestly, no, but you got to use some terminal commands it de does depend on which device you have. I actually, believe it or not, the best devices is the Google phones. They have completely unlockable bootloaders. They have the ability to restore the phone back to pure factory at any point in time. That's why I like those. So I'm actually still running up uh, Nexus 5X. In fact, I love them so much, I got a pile of them. So this one here is running EOS. My main phone, which is in production, is running Lineage. And I have another one over here, which is uh, effectively my backup phone runs Resurrection Remake. Now, there's some downsides to the way I'm doing these. One of these primary downsides is lineage on this particular device is not any more supported. So it basically just goes back to phones years and years and years ago. I don't necessarily have a lot of security updates, but since I use my phone for making phone calls and sending a couple text messages and that's about it, I don't really care. If you are using your phone for a lot of other services, you can get a currently supported lineage. Just don't do the Nexus 5X. <laughs> Absolutely. It is an old phone, but it's an old phone that's very easy to repair and parts are dirt cheap for it. So I'm okay with that. But you can do some of the more recent Pixel phones. You can do some, a lot of the other phones. And what you want to do is basically head on over to Lineage's website. And you can track down which phones actually have these builds. So just go ahead and track down whatever phone you might want to be looking at. And then you can kind of see what we have. So you can see they're not, uh, let's see, unless it's listed under LG. Um, I don't even think they have the Nexus, What the phone I'm using. I don't even think they have it on here anymore. That's how old it is. But you can go ahead and grab any of these extra phones that you have. And you can put... Uh, lineage onto these. So just kind of track down the phone that you have. Now there's a few little oddities. So like in Samsung phones, a few of the phones they'll work on the European versions, but not on the US versions. You want to get online and do a little bit of research about your phone first, but you can see a lot of galaxies are supported. And this is, this is one of the reasons I like Lineage is it's so easy to use. You just kind of click in on the one that you have, download the in information, and then click the installation instructions. And you can just go ahead and run through the installation instructions and they'll teach you how to build a custom ROM on your phone. You have to understand there are always going to be some risks anytime you do something like this. So be aware of that. But Nevertheless, this is a, a good thing to do. So Lineage is the one phone that I use. The other phone I actually have is Resurrection Remix. 
Resurrection Remix gives you basically lineage with an infinite amount of easy customizations. Anything from the styles to the colors to the backgrounds. My Resurrection Remix phone, it's really cool. It's just blingy. It's... And that's kind of the, the cool thing about it. There's just all sorts of different settings, all sorts of different options. Again, my version of uh, my phone is not particularly supported, but there are tons of phones that are still supported. So you can go ahead and uh, hunt around on the website to figure out which phone devices are supported. Now, the next big one that is coming out, and some people love this one, some people don't. I have a whole separate video specifically on E, and that's the phone I have right here. It's still on my charger, and oh, it wants to update itself. That's the cool thing. EOS on the Nexus 5X is still officially supported. It is, I think, the only ROM still officially supporting it and passing security updates. So if I was like wanted to keep using this phone, I could actually do that. And uh, this guy here, it does have an Apple-like appearance to it. So that's kind of what they were going for, although you can customize that. But it does look nice. For the most part, the phone is all open source, except for the mapping application. The mapping application is the only thing that is not pure FOSS on EOS. The reason is there is not a good EOS, um, a good map application that... Um, that actually works on that's pure open source. And so they have put that in there because of it. They have a good app store that tells you about the privacy notifications. And frankly, it will allow you to download several Google apps. EOS also contains the, the micro G. So those types of Google play services will uh, also function on your platform. So EOS is pretty cool. This is also one of the only phones that you can buy with this already installed. They might be a little bit more expensive, but if you are actually wanting to get it, they are now supporting these in US. You could buy them in Europe for a while. So you can actually buy it if you're like, I want to have a custom ROM, but I do not want to uh, I don't want to risk messing up my current phone installing it. You can actually purchase these, and I'm not sure where you can find them on the U.S., but uh, we covered it in the news the other day that uh, they do actually have these available now in United States for sale. There's a variety of different phones that you can get. So that's actually a nice option. They also have an account sync system, which you can sync up all of your account systems on the EOS sync app is literally just a, an integrated Nextcloud sync app. You can use it. You can create an EOS account, or if you have a Nextcloud build, you can actually sync everything on your device to your own private Nextcloud as well with the integrated app. That is one of the greatest selling points of it. You know, the Linux experiment is right the, as far as needing some form of uh, some form of of platform integration into into it. EOS is actually already does that, which does it really well. Syncs calendars, syncs contacts, syncs your data, everything else. E already does that. The other one is Graphene OS. So Graphene OS, this one takes the approach where EOS says, we want to have a custom ROM that's good for the average user. Graphene OS comes out and says, we want a custom ROM that is explicitly designed for privacy and security. So privacy and security focus, there are no Google Play services. They do not put micro G on it out of the box that I'm aware of. And uh, so it says down here, Graphene will never include either Google Play services or another implementation such as Micro G. This one here, if I had a compatible phone, I would probably be using Graphene OS because here's another downside of many of these custom ROMs. You cannot relock the bootloader with some of them on. It's going to show you a vendor mismatch. I personally don't care, but for a more um, for somebody that's a little bit more concerned, you're using your phone for more real world applications than I do, then that is something you want. Graphene OS and Copperhead OS are the only two I know of that allow you to do that. I'm not even sure if Copperhead is completely viable anymore. They had a snafu and they died for a while. I thought I saw a notice that they were coming back, but who knows. But Graphene OS, this guy here has basically all of the advantages of lineage. To my understanding, somebody did tell me it does have ADB root allowing you to modify your custom host file 
and uh, then you can just turn that back off. You can run everything just as fine. Graphene OS is the way you want to go if you have the ability to do it. If I upgrade to another smartphone, I will specifically be looking for something to run Graphene OS on because I think this is going to be the best option. So you can actually install and build. The biggest downside is there are very few phones already supported. And uh, let's see, smartphone targets. So we have crosshat. So we have basically the Pixel line of phones are supported. And other than that, not a lot more. So that's one of your downsides of graphene. A little bit more complicated, and uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to, to get running, but nevertheless, it's going to work. So let's bring us into this final wrap-up question. Are these custom ROMs viable? The answer is absolutely. I have used nothing but a custom ROM for about three years, give or take, and I forget exactly when it is, as I said at the beginning here. I absolutely have zero regrets. I feel like I have full control over my phone for the first time since I got the first Android phone a long, long time ago. It gives me everything that I need. Now, there are compromises. There are sacrifices. I don't use Google Play services. I don't recommend it. Like, well, how do I find my way? Get a GPS. That's what they're designed for. You shouldn't be relying on your phone to get you from point A to point B anyway. You should have a car GPS, if not a map in an atlas and you know, learn how to use them. Um, I don't have a weather channel app. That's an interesting one. There's a few open source weather applications. They're marginal at best. What I actually do on mine is I have Firefox Clar that is tied directly to the Tor network. So it's basically an anonymized and I just created a shortcut right on my phone and this just goes right to the weather channel on Firefox Clar, which means that it's not going to be collecting location data. It's not going to be collecting anything from the microphones or cameras. And I can just click that button right there's the full weather in my region. And that works perfectly fine. Works excellent for me. So I do that. As far as I, I don't use my phone for a lot of cross-syncing a lot of data. If I wanted to, I can use Nextcloud to do all that. No big deal. But ultimately, a custom phone ROM is perfectly viable. I've had no issues with it at all. This is a phone in full production use for my business, and it works absolutely flawless. So I will encourage you guys look into using a custom ROM. Even if it means you go out and you buy a spare phone so you can tinker around with it, and then when you're bold enough, be like, let's make the switch. And hey, it's always good to have a spare phone laying around anyway. If this guy drops in the toilet, I take out the SIM card, pop it over here, and hey, I haven't skipped a beat. So <laughs> there, there we go, guys. So are custom phone ROMs viable? The answer is absolutely they are viable, and I will encourage everybody to figure out how to use some custom phone ROMs, play around with it, buy yourself a cheap phone, Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, get yourself some cheap phone that you can put one of these custom ROMs on, experiment with it, broaden your horizons and see how these phone ROMs work because it is you will not go back. They are absolutely incredible. So there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, once again, thanks for uh, all the supporters who make this, uh, this show happen. And uh, you can find out all the support links and such in the comments or in the, the description box rather down below. Thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to a custom phone ROM. Ooh, gotcha, didn't I? Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.